All right, fans, with us today, he is the driver of the 5th Ave Bar and Grill, Breed Love Automotive, FCH Heating and Cooling, number 87, figure eight hot rod. They call him the El Matador. It's Matt Smith. Woo. How's it going, my man? <laughs> How's it going, man? How you doing? Awesome, awesome. Great to have you on. Uh, obviously, coming off an exciting weekend of the spring shootout there at the Indianapolis Speedrome, you had a yeah. solid, solid run. Little couple mishaps, but hey, we'll shake that off. Obviously, <laughs> we're going into this weekend. We're not too sure if you're going to be showing up, but we want we don't get into that. We want to talk a little bit about you, Matt, and let's get right on, right into it, my friend, and let's get my fans knowing a little bit about you. Are you ready? Awesome, man. Let's get going. All right, buddy. Tell my fans and listeners out there how. And when did you get your start in racing? Oh, man, uh, I've been involved with it my whole life. Uh, my dad grew up around Jack Dawsey. Um, they they grew up together as friends. Uh, so I grew up in uh, when Jack started racing and whatnot. My dad was helping Jack all through his career. So I grew up in the shop. Um, being at the racetrack, you know, naturally you, you gravitate to people or kids your age and you start playing around with them, running around with them. Uh, grew up out there with, you know, Ben, Jesse, Austin, Mark. Uh, Charlie Hargraves, Corey Turner, um, you know, all, all the guys around my age, we all kind of grew up out there and running around. Um, and then uh, all my friends started racing and I, and I never really had the means to make it out there. So I started helping you know, whoever I could, whoever I can, you know, turn a wrench for and I started helping them guys. Um, some years later down the road after, you know, me and Ben went through, um, you know, helping him and what, what we did together as a crew chief and uh, driver. Uh, that we won all across the United States and, you know, done a lot of good, good things with that. Uh, he actually pushed me to try to get my own car and uh, a lot of other people did. And I ended up getting one back in uh, the end of 2017. And uh, we ran for 2018 rookie of the year, won it third and three hour of that year. Uh, last year, so, you know, the next year we got our first win. Last year we got another big win. And uh, now this year we got some speed and we're pretty competitive. Okay, okay, that kind of leads right into what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Obviously, you know, not very long into the game, but been around it for a long time. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, what's the biggest race you won? And obviously, uh, go ahead. Yeah, the, the Phyllis Tunney, yeah, the Phyllis Tunney. Uh, and, you know, battling with Ben, you know, uh, beating him was always, always, always uh, sweet. When you can beat a guy as good as Ben, uh, you know, that was our biggest win, 75 laps. It was the first uh, first annual uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't the Phyllis Tunney. He was uh, Wayne Arnold. I'm sorry. The Wayne Arnold, the first annual Wayne Arnold race. Um, won it. And that, that was pretty cool, you know, when that one. Uh, we got beat a couple weeks ago by Eddie uh, for a 50-lapper. Uh, so it wasn't a big race, but, uh, you know, we led about, I think we led like 48 laps or something yeah. like that. It was that. like 98% of the race, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then Eddie Eddie beat us to the line. So uh, we, we won some that way uh, with Ben. And uh, we've definitely lost them that way. It's just my turn to lose that way, I guess. I got it. I got it. Definitely a solid race. I, I loved every minute of that one. But, <laughs> hey, let's, let's switch gears here a little bit, Matt. Obviously, we're a little bit other than just racing talk. We uh, do all the sports here. But I got to ask you a, a famous breakfast question here on the E's and B's podcast. <laughs> let's say this. Tomorrow, you're making breakfast for any race car person, personality, whatever. What are you making and who are you making it for? Uh, who am I making it for? I'm making. Well, I love bacon. Uh, those bacon, I guess, is the is the best uh, breakfast food. Anytime I, I'm not a, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge uh, breakfast person. I always kind of gravitate to, you know, lunch if I can, or get brunch food. I got you. Um. So, but so anytime I eat, eat a sandwich, I always throw bacon on it. I, I think that's my breakfast. <laughs> All right. Um. But if I could make it for anyone, um, man, there's a there's a whole list of people, uh, you know, drivers wise. I mean, I think you know chase elliott he's a good guy i'd like to hang out with um you know uh dell jr he seems like a fun guy i listen to all his podcasts and he's always you know a ride to be around um but i like a lot of the older guys you know i like listening to their stories so probably get you know like a tony stewart or aj Foyt or someone in there that you know really yeah. tell some good old stories definitely definitely i could always agree with everyone you name there <laughs> let me ask you this what do you love most about racing Oh man, the competitive of it, man. Uh, it's, I grew up around sports, uh, playing sports my whole life. Um, you know, being able to, uh, compete and, and, and be competitive with it is what, is what I love. Um, you know, being able to work on your car, or, you know, and, and trying to beat the next guy that's right there with you, you know, uh, what do you have to do to, to be faster and, uh, to beat that person 
And, I, and that's the biggest thing, man. And uh, you try to talk to these people who don't uh, understand racing. Like, why do you race? Uh, well, this is competitive. You know, they just think this car is going in. Well, they say a circle. You got to just go in a circle, turn the left. Uh, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> you know, there, you know, Hey, there's a lot more setup stuff to it, and, that, and that's always fun to do, learning stuff and, you know, trying different things. Uh, well, I did this last week. Let's try this, let's try this this week. And you, once you start breaking it down like that to other people, they're like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't even think about all that kind of stuff. And, you know, then, then you throw in, oh, we're turning left and right. Oh, by the way, we got to shoot that crossover too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Matt. Obviously, I talked to Mark last week and kind of been a while back, but I got the same kind of feeling you're going to say the same thing. You know, yeah. they talk a lot about rhythm. Obviously, in figure mm -hmm. eight racing, you got you got to have your head on a swivel. You got to make sure you know what's going on at all times. But I asked Mark last week, I got to ask you this week, do you prefer the lap count races or the timed races? Oh, man, that's a that's a good question. The they both got they're both good in their own aspect. Um, you know, my first couple of years, I'd probably say the the lap aspect because it's usually the lap is a little bit smaller of a race. I wouldn't be so nervous for a big <laughs> race. Uh, if, if I got out front, maybe I could hold these guys off for a couple of laps and maybe uh, sneak one out. Uh, now that I'm, you know, in my fourth year, um, I kind of like the time races more, uh, kind of falls more into my wheelhouse of what I like to do. I kind of like to let the race play out a little bit and come to me. Um, so I, I think in the, in, in that deal, you know, with the, with the time races, um, you, you have a better chance to where you these, these guys who have a little bit faster car, uh, you maybe they can make a mistake or two in traffic. Uh, something I can capitalize on. Some that I don't have the experience. Of some of these guys, um, I went from you know straight from a front wheel drive to a figure eight car, uh, so I'm legit four years into racing. <laughs> Big <basically>. jump, <laughs> yeah. And uh, some of these guys, they've been racing like Ben and you know a lot of guys don't think about Ben and Mark. I mean, they've been racing for almost 20 years now. And they're young guys, but they they got a career under their belts. Um, you know, and then you guys got like Eddie Van Meter and Doug Gregg and uh, Mike Riddle and these guys, you know, they've been racing for a long, long time, probably longer than I've been alive, really. Right, right. Uh, so they got a lot more experience. And, you know, anytime I'm on the track with anyone out there, I'm always learning new things from those guys. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's change it up a little bit here again. How about this one, Matt? Um, you're going to the movies tomorrow to see the movie about your life. What's the name of it and who is playing you? Oh, Channing Tatum, dude. Don't can't you see the resemblance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the story of my life is uh, got to be life in the fast lane, you know. It's got to be something right. something along those lines, something that cliche, uh, you know. And um, yeah, I'd say Channing Tatum. Yeah, he's a good-looking okay. guy. He can, he can play me. All right. I like it. I like it. You were way faster to the punch than the other guys. I can say that for <laughs> sure. Let me ask you this, Matt. What's the top three podcast you're listening to right now? Oh man, I'm a huge podcast guy. Um, I listen to Pat McAfee about anything him and his guys put out. A uh, hilarious guy. He's a human that's out of this world right now. Um, so anything they, those those guys put out, Dale Jr. Um, I've actually I've, you know, I've been listening to you here more so lately. Uh, you know, I've been picking you up. Uh, and and uh, there's the one that I kind of like. A, I'm kind of like a a nerd on this is a. Uh, uh, 1041 by Todd McComas. He's kind of like a true crime documentary type thing. He Man, that, so. that's very popular. Uh, it seems to be, when I ask this question a lot, I get a lot of true mystery, true crime, whatever. Uh, you're not out of the ordinary on that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, my like wife, my wife loves it. It's it's big yeah. here too as well. Yeah, awesome. I like the fact that he's based out of Indianapolis, you know, so I like uh, those local guys too. Definitely. <laughs> yes, we can agree on that one. Hey, I got to ask you this. What's your biggest pet peeve when racing? Oh, man. Uh, is this one? oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man uh just not 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 driving people to not people not driving me the same as i drive them i guess is probably the biggest pet peeve um you know i everyone makes mistakes so, you know a few weeks back i made a mistake and spun doodle ferris out uh 100 my fault I got in there too hot got into it spun him out i don't want to race that way i hate racing that way um i try to race everybody as clean as possible and, and the same way they race me uh, so when I dumped doodle, I kind of was like, man, I messed up. I pulled over, let him gather it back up. He got a spot back in front of me and we went racing again. Um, I, I've watched a lot of the older guys do do that kind of stuff. Wayne Arnold, um, you know, Jack Dulcie, Bill Tunney, Bruce Tunney, they've done that kind of stuff. And I kind of uh, learned from them, you know, watching them do that, doing that kind of stuff. Now, I thought that was real uh, amenable, the uh, respectable type stuff for them to do that. 
and and it's and I want to be remembered like that. So that's what I try to do. And when you get these guys that are just, you know, driving off the hood pins and just going in there, just hitting you for like no reason, like, oh, I mean, a couple of times, okay, we all stack up, stuff happens. When it's repeatedly like corner after corner, it's like, all right, come on, man. <laughs> I'm not hitting the guy in front of me. You ain't got to wear my back bumper out. Yeah, I get you there. And I could say, I think you're on the right path, in my opinion. Probably one of the cleanest drivers out there. Obviously, you know, this last Saturday was a big race, 90 minute race. And yeah, I, I got to be honest, I know I'm, I was watching it here in Colorado, but from what I could see, I think your car came home pretty darn clean. So, you know, when you yeah. can do that in a big race like that, that means something. That means you're giving and taking. And that's what the sport's normally about. Let's talk about something else that's kind of about, you know, in the family matters. It's something that I brought up last week, and I want to bring it up again with you. It's the great deed that you done just a week or so ago on Facebook. Yeah. And it was when you put your side skins up from your car, obviously offering them out, and then all proceeds going to Rose and Tony. Man, that's such a great thing. That's what racing family means, and I, sh I can't stress it enough. That's why I love to bring people like you on my show because I feel like you need to have this, the spotlight shined on you just a little bit more than what it already is. Can you talk just a little bit about that, Matt? Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, uh, you know, Roseanne, growing up, you know, Ben and I was great friends growing up, um, and, and she was a second mother to me. And, uh, you know, what happened to her was a tragic accident. Uh, sucks and I hate seeing it for someone I care about um, you know with a life-changing uh, injury like that um, you know I, I wish I was in a better financial situation where I can just help her out more than what I could uh, so but the next best thing I can do is you know help out with what I can and then I saw someone on Mark's post hey, you should auction this off you know and give the proceeds well, that's a pretty good idea and I had a couple doors from my rookie year uh, and one from last year that uh, we changed out and I was like, that's a pretty good idea. You know, I ain't going to pull the money like what Mark does. You know, Mark's got fans <laughs> all over the place. Uh, but I, you know, I figured well, every little bit I can get, uh, I can I can help out. And then, by the way, Matt Owen did have the big, the biggest, um, you know, uh, bid on my deal. Uh, and, I, and I just announced it. It's the first time because uh, I've been so busy with a bunch of other life stuff going on. To, but Matt Owen did did win. He had the, the highest bid at $300. So. Uh, that's why I got to get that out to him and uh, get that money over to Roseanne and help them out. Well, congratulations, not only to Matt Owen, but to you for doing an amazing thing. Keep up everything you're doing. We got just a couple more for you here, Matt. <laughs> we'll turn the, the mic over to you, let you promote yourself and get you out of here and get you on down the road. But I got to ask you this next when you're traveling around the world, Matt, mm -hmm. with to see sightsee, and you can take any racing pal that you got, which one are you taking and why? Oh, man. Any racing pal. Oh, man. Um, I'd have to take, you know, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, Mark. Mark's a good friend of mine. If I can take him, my uncle Chris, he's a he's my main help. You know, one of my main helps on the car. Um, another guy, Larry, that helps me. If I can take those three guys, you know, that they're my friends. Uh, we can go anywhere in the world and watch any kind of racing. Man, I, I really want to go watch those uh, sprint cars, run Eldora or some kind of uh, track like that you know the um that knoxville nationals or something cool like that outside of figure eight racing i think uh that that right there is probably one of the most exciting things you can watch um and then again it's oval racing it's cool but i don't think it's as cool as what we do so if there's anything i could do i'd probably take my buddies with me and we'll go watch one of them races like that but uh we, we'll get back home soon to watch that figure eight awesome awesome <laughs> i think that would be a great time i would love to be a fly on the wall for that trip for sure Hey, all right, last one I got before I turn it over to you, Matt, and it's kind of a tough one, but we all want to know, when it's all said and done, what do you want the Matt Smith racing legacy to be? Oh, man, I just uh, want everyone to know that, uh, you know, I'd like to leave a lasting impression that um, I ran hard and I ran fair, um, won my fair share of races, and was just a good guy. You know, I want to be remembered as one of the good guys, you know, that's what that's that's one of the biggest things, most important things to me. Uh, always gonna have fun, uh, win, lose, or draw. We're always gonna have some fun. Uh, I think a lot of people know that we're gonna do that uh, already, anyways. Uh, but the biggest thing is, I just want everyone to know that uh, you know we're we're here to have fun and we're gonna you know give it our all. And uh, we just want to you know everyone know we did it the right way and we had fun doing it. Awesome, awesome. Well, I can't agree more. Like I said earlier, I think you're on the right path. I can't wait to see. The rest of the season, how it shakes out for you. But before I let you go, Matt, like I always do, I always turn the tables over to my interviewees. 
you know, is there anything you got to ask old Eddie B? And also make sure you promote yourself and all your sponsors. Take oh, yeah, the, for sure. Uh, I want to know, what do you think about, so you're a big wrestling guy, right? Love it. <laughs> so what do you think about Pat's doing on this Friday night SmackDown? Okay, my honest opinion, I talked about it several months ago when he actually made his debut. Mm -hmm. Still to this day, I think it's probably the best uh, out of wrestling sports entertainment person that's came into wrestling today and performed like that. I mean, nobody has topped that. He's he he set the bar so high, and now where he's at on SmackDown, I think I, I I'm growing into it a little bit. But my honest yeah. opinion is, I'd rather see him wrestle. I, I'd rather see him. In <laughs> honestly but yeah. i i think it's a good thing you know that they, they, they got some tough competition and, and things are starting to change with them getting ready to go on the road so it'll be interesting to see how he does on that and and, and going yeah. forward into the summer so yeah good question oh yeah yeah i know i know his schedule you always talk about schedule being so crazy and how, how he's flying all over the world like every other day it seems like uh you know growing up you know big you know steve austin and and the rock fan and uh, mankind and, and yeah. that whole attitude era. I, I was a huge, you know, we couldn't go to school without, you know, quoting The Rock or Stone yeah. Cold. And yeah. we're stunning someone in the hallways <laughs> of school. You know, we've always done goofy stuff like that. And then, you know, as that kind of getting started getting phased out, I stopped kind of really watching it and then really listening to Pat. Um, you know, he's kind of got brought me back into it. So I'm starting to get going again a little bit and, and kind of picking up on it and following it here and there. Not like I was, but I'm starting to follow a little bit more because he kind of got me into it. So that's awesome. a pretty cool deal. Awesome. Uh, I can't agree. That's cool. That's cool because <laughs> that's how I was. I fell out of it for a while and then, you know, I got right back into it. And now there's so much. And now that I cover it all, it's it keeps me busy. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, right, you know, for sure. Before we get you out of here, obviously, let's push them them plugs and sponsors for, for yourself. Yeah, man. I couldn't do it without, you know, Uncle Chris, Larry, John. Those are my main main helps. Uh, you know, Fifth Avenue Grill and Bar out here in Beach Grove. Uh, if you guys ever get thirsty, hungry, at the best food, coldest drinks. Uh, they run specials. Buy one, get the one, the exact same price. Uh, and then we also got Breed Love Automotive. He's helped me out quite a bit. Uh, T8 Race Cars, uh, Joe Williamson Racing Engines, Last Chance Trekker. Bell Helmets, uh, Munns Construction actually came on here lately. I haven't been able to chance to put him on the car yet, but he helped me out. Uh, let's see who else is on there. I know I'm going to forget somebody. I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, Tharps uh, Tree Care, he's helped me out. Um, John Wilson, uh, he actually lets me keep my car at his house and use his shop. I ransack it. And uh wasn't for him, we'd be working probably in the rocks in my driveway. <laughs> uh, so he, he, he does a big thing for me. Uh, my mom, my family, and biggest all my fiance. She uh she's came into this and she's been super super helpful uh and, and you know taking everything in stride. So I can't thank her enough. And uh, she's actually falling in love with as much she hates to admit it. She loves this race and stuff. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, Matt, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you on. Until next time, buddy. I make sure or we want to make sure that you keep the hammer down. We know you're going to be getting yes, that W very very soon. And yes, we'll sir. be pulling for you over here at the E's and B's. Ladies and gentlemen, the driver of the number 87 machine. It's the El Matador, Matt Smith. All right, my man. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks, buddy. You bet.